In this video, I paint Percy from the Vox Machina. Hello Bits Brood, it's Craig from Bitsbox.co.uk here with the latest video in our Critical Role Vox Machina painting series. And in this video, I'm going to be painting Percy, and I'm just going for a tabletop standard, as always. So, um, before we begin, if you are new to this channel and you like all things hobby related, or you're just here for the Critical Role miniatures, then do feel free to hit that subscribe button down below, and you can ring that bell icon if you never want to miss an upload. And as always, before we begin, just a quick shout out and a massive thank you to all of our Patreons. If you want to know what our Patreon is all about, there is a link in the description below. So without further ado, let's get straight into this. Okay, so here we have the Percy miniature, and I've primed him with the Games Workshop Graysear Spray Primer. But you can use any spray primer that you so wish. So, I'm going to start by painting his coat. And I'm going to take some Cantor Blue. So if you've been watching a few of these videos now, you'll know I like to start with the darkest colour and work my way up. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here with the Cantor Blue. Now thin it down just a little bit and I will do a couple of coats for a nice smooth application. This will help um, obscure any detail. I mean there's not a massive amount of detail on this coat but there is like the odd little bits of decoration and you don't want to be too thick around them. So a nice couple of coats there, we're going to take some of the crag blue now. And again you're probably familiar by now with the application. going to thin it out and go over most of the coat again, but this time leaving the darker colour in them recessed areas. I apologise if a miniature keeps going out of focus, I um, don't know what's up with my camera lately. But for purposes of this, um, you should be able to just see what I'm doing here. So coats like this, coats and robes and things like that, I really like doing this technique on. As you can see, it goes on really smoothly, even though I thin this paint out a little bit, that still covers over the Cantal Blue really nice, so I just do the one coat. So next up, I'm going to take some Calador Sky. This is, again, this is another base paint from GW, so they cover really well. And doing exactly the same thing, except this time a lot more selective. So going more around the edges and the most raised areas. And I've thinned it out again. And by thinning it out, that means it will dry a little bit more subtle, and that will give you a bit of a smoother transition between the colours. But as we're only going for like a tabletop standard here, then... It's not the um, smoothest transition you'll see, but it's smooth enough for like a good tabletop. And I've switched to a smaller brush for this as well, as you could probably see, just about. Now when it comes to like the top half of the coat, I'm just going on sort of more sort of raised areas. Just doing odd little highlights. So next I'm going to take some Retributor Armour. And this is a lovely gold colour, and this is for all them little details on the coat. Might be a little bit hard to see on the camera here, but and there's all these little swirly designs and stuff. You just need a good tip on your brush, and thin the paint down just a little bit so it flows nicely off the brush. And then with a steady hand, you should be able to paint all these little gold details. Just take your time and don't rush it. And then when it's done, it'll look something like this. And next, I'm going to take some Seraphim Sepia. So I'm not really too sure what's going on with this bit of coat here, so I'll just paint it all gold. And yeah, just going over all the gold areas with this wash. That'll just go in all the deepest recesses and just give you a little... Bring out that detail. As you can see, I've done gold on his sword as well. Next I'm going to take some Phoenician Purple, and this is for his cravat. Um, you could do this a different colour. I've seen artwork where it's purple, and I thought that looked quite nice. So I thought in this instance we'll go purple. But of course, what's great about these Critical Role matches, there's lots of sort of different variations you can do with the colours. And again, I apologise for it going out of focus, I really wasn't aware it was doing that so often. 
Next, I'm going to take some Xerus purple, and let's just do a highlight. So it's only going to be like a little subtle highlight on there. And it just highlights that little area quite nicely. Next up, some Corvus Black. So this is going to be for his boots. I'm really liking this Corvus Black. It's a really nice sort of very dark grey rather than a pure black. And as I've been doing the bases with a pure black, doing like the off black just helps them stand out just a little bit from the base. So Katachan Flesh next. This is a nice brown colour. I find it very good for leather pouches and things like that. Which is why I'm using it for Percy's pouches. And I thinned it down. Um, this is a base paint. The base paints are normally um, thicker than the layer paints. So they cover really well even when you thin them down a little bit. And I don't really know what's going on sort of there. So I've just painted all of that in that colour. And I'm going to take some Rakar Flesh now. And this is for his gloves. I just wanted the gloves to be sort of a different... A different shade of brown from his pouches and stuff. You can see I've also done the butt of his gun in the brown as well. I'll try and bring him over, over a bit more to see if we focus and there he goes. But yeah, just go over all the gloves with this colour. And next I'm going to take some Iron Hands Steel. This is of course for the guns. This is another one of the more recent GW colours that I'm really enjoying. It's not quite as dark as Lead Belcher, which what I would have used before. So it just gives a slightly lighter metal appearance to the guns. So next I'm going to take some Agrax Earthshade, and that is to shade all these areas. So the gloves, the pouches, and the metallic areas as well. So try not to let it pull up too much, but I'm applying it fairly thickly. Now you could do Null Oil instead on the metal if you want. I like the Agrax, so it gives it a little bit of an aged appearance. So some Blood Reaver Flesh next. This is to highlight all them brown pouches. I'm just doing a little edge highlight around them. Just picking out the edges and that'll just help give it a nice little highlight and make them stand out just a little bit more. You could even go a step further with a lighter brown if you so wish. And next up I'm going to take some flayed one flesh. Now thin this down a fair bit because it's quite a light colour but by thinning it down it won't dry as light and it makes a nice little highlight for the gloves. You see I haven't got the best tip on the brush at the moment here but it does the job. So mainly focusing on them fingers and some of the raised areas. I'm going to take some Dark Reaper and this is to highlight his boots. So this is a really nice sort of almost like a bluey grey colour, like a dark bluey greeny grey colour. It's really good for highlighting black or in this case a very dark grey. Now I'm going to take some Stormhouse Silver to highlight the guns. You could use a darker silver if you so wish but I quite like using the, the light silver and I'm only using it just on like the, the sort of top highlights. Just run it along the top of a gun. So it just gives you a, sort of the appearance of light sort of bouncing off the metal. Next, take some Kislev Flesh, and this is of course for his face. Now thin it down. I always highly recommend thinning your paints down when it comes to faces and flesh, because it's very easy to lose detail if you go um, too thick. And of course, they are the focal points of a lot of miniatures. But on the lighter base coat, even one thin down layer covers really nicely. Take some Reichland Flesh Shade now, and this will help bring out the detail on his face. Also letting it sort of pull up in the middle of his glasses as well. So give that plenty of time to dry before you move on to the next step. And that's so you highlight the face with some Flayed One Flesh. 
And I'm just going to catch the chin, the nose. And you, as you can see, it's in and out of focus, but you can see just the areas I'm catching here. And I'll thin this out again so it won't dry as quite drastic as this. So it'll be a bit more subtle by the time it dries. You see, I went a bit too heavy on the cheek there, but it wasn't too bad. Next, I'm going to take some Grey Knight Steel, and this is for his glasses. So, with a steady hand, just apply that around the rims of the glasses. This is a really nice, shiny, sort of almost bluey silver. So, I think it worked really well for his glasses. You can just use any silver that you so wish. So next, I take some Ulfuan Grey, and this is for his hair and also for his trousers as well. So of course you could go any colour with the trousers. I thought it would be easier to do them the same colour as the hair. And they contrast really nicely against the blue. Now again I don't really know what's going on with his right leg. So you see I sort of painted half of that in there. We're going to take some white scar now just to highlight these areas. So that's why I like using the Ulfu and Grey first. It's almost white, but it's not quite all the way white. If you went completely with a white scar, then you'd have nowhere else to go for a highlight. So using the sort of very light grey means you can come in with your white scar and apply some nice pure white highlights. Like so. And then finally just take some abandoned black to paint the base. Now of course you can do your bases however you wish. But for D&D miniatures, I just like pure black. And you can see it's quite thin, so I will need two or three coats. And here is the finished Percy miniature. So I think, um, I don't know, Keyless probably is my favourite so far, but Percy is a very close second. I really enjoyed painting this one. And the blue really sort of stands out against the white on his trousers and hair. But again, a really nice miniature. I'm really enjoying these miniatures. So next up, I believe it's going to be Pike. So be sure to look out for that one. And of course, hit that subscribe button if you want to stay up, um, up to date and notified when that comes out. And if you have enjoyed this video, then please do feel free to give it a thumbs up. And you can leave any comments down below. So all that's left to say is thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. You can also click that bell icon to be notified when a new video has gone live on this channel. On the screen now are two more videos that you may wish to check out, and a link to our Patreon page also. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again soon.